This is BBC Bite Size with Chris Smith and with Ben Valsler. We're from the Naked Scientists. In this podcast, we're going to uncover the workings of speeds, distances and velocities. So, Ben, what does speed actually mean? Well, speed is a measure of how far something will move in a certain amount of time. So if you were driving down the motorway at 100 kilometres an hour, you would travel 100 kilometres for every hour that you're travelling. So does that mean that if I travelled for, say, two hours, I would have gone twice as far, 200 kilometres? Yes, that's exactly right. If you travel at a certain speed for a time, you will have travelled a distance that equals that speed times that time. And if I'd gone for, say, seven hours, I would have gone 100 kilometres an hour times seven hours equals 700 kilometres. That's right, yes. You can also rearrange the same equation to find out your speed. So if you divide both both sides of the equation by time, you get speed equals distance divided by time. Now this means that your average speed is the distance you've travelled divided by the time it took. So if it took me three hours to cover 180 kilometres, how fast would I be going? You'd be travelling at 180 divided by three, that's 60 kilometres per hour. So what about if I was just driving into town, which is say... 10 kilometres away, but it only takes a quarter of an hour. Well, you do exactly the same thing. It's 10 kilometres divided by a quarter, which is the same as multiplying by four, so you get 40 kilometres per hour. We can use other units to measure speeds. In fact, any unit of distance per a unit of time is speed. So you could use millimetres per year or centimetres per century, but we'll use metres per second for the most scientific purposes, as it makes maths easier later on. So if I travel 100 metres in 50 seconds, I'll be going at 100 divided by 50, 2 metres a second. That's right. And could I have a negative speed? Well, a negative speed is fairly meaningless because your speed isn't affected by the direction you're travelling in. A negative velocity, on the other hand, is meaningful. But velocity, isn't that just another way of saying speed? Well, not quite. The concept of velocity includes what direction you're travelling in. So you could have a speed of 5 metres per second, but you'd have a velocity of 5 metres per second going north. A negative velocity just means you're travelling in the opposite direction. So a velocity of minus 5 metres per second upwards is the same as a velocity of 5 metres per second downwards. Could I be going at a constant speed but have a velocity that's changing? Yes, you could actually, and you do it all the time. If you drive around a roundabout at 30 kilometres per hour, your speed is constant, but your direction, and therefore your velocity, is changing. In fact, you're actually accelerating. But what is an acceleration? Well, it's a rate of change of velocity. So if you start off at one velocity and later you end up at another velocity, you are accelerating. In a car, you can tell you're accelerating because this is when you feel like you're being thrown around the car. So this is like when I speed up or go around corners? Yes, and of course when you slow down, which is also sometimes known as deceleration, and it's acting to reduce your speed, but it's actually still an acceleration. So if I was stationary and three seconds later I'm moving in a straight line at, say, nine metres a second, I've been accelerating? Yes, that's right. You'll have been accelerating at 9 divided by 3, which is 3 metres per second per second. So 3 metres per second squared. So why is it measured in metres per second per second or metres per second squared? Well, acceleration is the amount that velocity changes every second. So it's measured in metres per second per second, which can be simplified to metres per second squared.